Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hepner and today is August 2nd, 2017. In just a moment, we're gonna be on to your aviation, public and marine forecast. Don't forget, you can always call our 1-800 number for the forecast at 1-800-472-0391. And now look, let's look at the topics uh, for the upcoming days. It looks like we're going to have uh, front spreading east, and it's going to be stalling through Thursday across much of the state. We're going to see the highest rain totals along the west and west coastal areas. And then the fog and marine stratus over the bearing is going to be persisting through the end of the week and expect uh, to see a drier pattern on Friday as the system begins to uh, break down. Let's take a look at the watches, warnings, and advisories across the state. We do have an advisory up along the western areas of the Brooks Range, and this is for flooding along streams and rivers. Expect river rises with uh, rain totals between one to three inches since Monday. Uh, the rivers are going to be on the increase, and especially since we do have ongoing precipitation expected uh, through your day on Thursday. So this advisory is out until 11.30 p.m. on Thursday. Look out for updates on that advisory, depending on if that system stalls a little bit longer. Now we also have fire danger on the eastern corridor of the state down through the Copper River Basin, and these are across areas that are we have been on the drier side, and as we've also experienced some lightning strikes up there across the northeast. Look for that fire danger to continue through your day tomorrow as the eastern areas of the state are going to be staying on the drier side. And you can take a look at the maps right now to see where all the cloud cover is spread across the, the state this afternoon. I'm gonna put this into motion so you can see the flow pattern. It is starting to shift further east and the main rain band associated uh, with the weather that you've been experiencing is across the Bristol Bay area on towards just along the western areas of the Alaska Range. This is all um, moisture pooling up towards the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast and a low pressure system just to the north have, has uh, initiated a few thunderstorms out in that direction. Now, uh, the areas across the Bering are fully cloud covered. You just can't always see the lower clouds with the cooler cloud tops uh, near the water temperatures at times. But let's take a look here at the southeast, across the southeast and panhandle areas. There have been uh, rather large breaks in the clouds with the Gulf water seeing large breaks as well. Mainly um, high pressure in control across the eastern areas of the Gulf. We'll get to your surface map in just a moment. But for the most part, we're going to be looking at this stream of clouds into the central areas of the state to be continuing. Now, looking at the surface map, the feature here, uh, we have a low pressure system just along the eastern Beaufort Sea. Now, a warm front had moved into the area across Bristol Bay, so temperatures along the Akpen rather warm um, for rainy conditions up there in the 60 degree range. Across the southeast, with those breaks in the sun, temperatures had climbed up into the 60s and 70s this afternoon, with rain mainly light just ahead of the uh, main system. Uh, we do have a little bit heavier showers across the eastern areas of the Brooks Range as those thunderstorms were developing and fog just off the co coast of Barrow. Now across the Bering, um, primarily just low clouds, but some weak waves in the upper level systems are bringing some light rain and drizzle across much of the Bering. With thunderstorms across the western areas of the Aleutians this afternoon developing along another potent wave that's approaching 
from uh, the North Pacific out in that direction. A colder air mass behind this low pressure system, I kind of wanted to leave this open so you can see the darker uh, cloud cover here as this indicates that is a cooler air mass that's dropping into the south of this system. And like I said, there is light rain showers all across the Bering and through the Alaska Peninsula. Now let's take a look at our forecast tonight. This low pressure system is going to be pulling this front all the way into the Alaska Range back towards the Seward Peninsula. And then north, we still have that forward extension of the moisture streaming up ahead of that main upper level system. So expect that rain to you know, creep into the south central locations all the way up through Fairbanks, bring some light continuous rain. And then across the western areas of the Bering, just a weak ridging in between the systems will give a break. However, the low stratus and fog is going to be quite uh, dense across all, all of the bearing. Expect a few more thunderstorms across the western Aleutians as that upper level waves moves across. And then the ridge across the eastern areas of the Gulf, that is going to be staying in place, holding there, keeping skies on the clearer side across the eastern areas of the Gulf in the southeast. So as we head into your Thursday, that ridge is going to stay in place and go from 1030 to 1032 millibars. So that's going to keep the southeast under a, a dry flow. Now, just to the west of this high pressure, this low is going to be pushing into the ridge. And this is going to cause a tighter pressure gradient between the two systems. So expect a gustier south to southeasterly flow across Kodiak locations and around the Marines of Bristol Bay and just south of the Alaska Peninsula. Winds are going to be gusting between 25 to 35 miles per hour, uh, possibly higher across the channel terrain in these locations. Look for that ongoing light rain drizzle to the north and then across the mountain ranges. We're going to see some heavier showers there at times. And for your Thursday forecast, expect most of that rain to light rain to start spreading across much of the Copper River all the way um, north to the eastern Beaufort Seacoast. So another day of rain for much of the state and across the Bering locations behind this system, we have another low pr pressure system with that surface low coming right into the eastern areas of the Bering to kind of re rejuvenate this low pressure system. So that's going to help continue things, especially with the upper levels. Another wave is coming across that strong one along Shimia. So with an, the low pressure that's kind of dropping out of the Bering Strait and the low pressure coming from the west, we're going to see conditions possibly continuing a little bit longer than what we're expecting. And the main areas that would be affected is where this low pressure um, is sitting and along to the east of it. So Look for updates possibly to keep that rain continuing for the southwest and possibly into the south central locations. It'll, it all depends on how far south this system drops and how quickly. And then it also is going to depend on this ridging. As you can see, it is a little bit further east, I'm sorry, to the west on, the, on Friday as it starts to approach that northeastern coast. Now this ridge could dry things out for south central and much of the western areas as it, as it shoves a little bit further to the west. However, there might be some changes and updates on this forecast. Now for the northern tier of the state, they should be on the drier side as this ridge is going to be extending all the way to the eastern Beaufort Seacoast. And showers along the southern areas of the Brooks Range will be the most lo likely locations on Friday to see any precipitation. Now the southeast and the Panhandle will continue with those dry conditions through your Friday forecast. Now that ridge is not going to be as strong, but the area that's going to cover is going to be most impressive. Also, another ridge is going to follow behind that low pressure that tracks across quickly on Thursday. So look for drying conditions across the western areas of the Bering. However, it's very moist around these air masses, so we're going to expect that that low stratus and the fog will continue across the Bering locations. Now let's take a look at your temperatures today. Let's quite um, moderate across the entire state, ranging between the mid 50s to mid 60s under cloud cover. And like I said, the warm system that was coming through Bristol Bay brought temperatures up into the upper 60s across the Alaska Peninsula. Now for the southeast, they started a little bit cool in the upper 50s to lower 60s, but rose up into the upper 60s to mid 70s with 76 
observed at Annette today. An eagle um, earlier this morning was at 37 degrees to start, but they had a quick climb uh, to 76 during the afternoon hours. And then the eastern boat for seacoast, rather warm around the low pressure system up there between you know 55 and 65 degrees. And then towards Barrow and back towards the Seward Peninsula, a little bit cooler there with temperatures in the lower 40s to mid 50s. Across the western areas of the state, primarily in the 50s, with slightly warmer temperatures across the eastern areas of the Alaska Peninsula in the upper 60s. And general, generally across the water areas out west, we saw between 48 to 55 degrees. Looking at your temperatures for overnight, look for the warmest temperatures across the areas where we're going to see that cloud cover. So temperatures mainly in the mid 50s uh, all across the state. Slightly warmer temperatures down there in the southeast with a net probably going down to around 56 or 57 degrees. And the Beaufort Sea Coast, look for temperatures in the lower 40s back across the northwest also in the mid 40s to upper 40s. For your bearing locations, temperatures are going to be nearly steady in near 50 degrees. Looking at your temperatures for tomorrow, the warmest areas of the state still will continue to be the eastern areas of the state across the eastern, the Alaska and Can Canada border, with the southeast also seeing a very similar day in the upper 60s to mid 70s. Across the northern tier, the state slightly warmer, with all locations getting up into the mid 50s, and across the southwestern areas of the state, near 60 to 65 degrees across the Alaska Peninsula once again, and temperatures should be in the mid 50s across much of the bearing. Looking at your flying weather for tomorrow, the IFR and MVFR conditions are going to be widespread across central areas and western areas of the state and all across the Bering expect IFR for your morning conditions. Now across the Gulf, other than uh, some light fog in the morning, looking at the southeast staying clear and then in the afternoon we'll see mostly MVFR conditions and IFR across western areas of the state clear across the southeast and the bearing is going to be widespread with IFR conditions. Now looking at your passes individually we'll see Anatovic and Adigan pass both MVFR and then we'll see Lake Clark and Merrill pass also MVFR conditions and looking at Windy Pass we could start with IFR for your morning and then improve to MVFR with Isabel staying MVFR all day. And we'll see Mentasta at VFR and Tanita will also be IFR going to MVFR during the afternoon. Looking at Portage, mainly MVFR conditions and light rain. And Chilkoot and White Pass will be the only ones with VFR all day expected. Now your freezing levels for tomorrow morning, uh, surface freezing level of course is uh, north of the slope and then we'll see six to eight thousand across the Brooks Range increasing to fourteen thousand as you head down towards the Gulf waters and same trends there across the Bering a little bit quicker height rises across the eastern Bering with twelve thousand to four thousand fourteen thousand feet across the Bering to the North Pacific. Now looking at your icing the main concerns are going to be along the frontal locations dra draped from the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast back down towards the Alaska Peninsula above 6,000 feet to the north and then above 9,000 as you head further south. Your jet stream tomorrow is going to be amplified with low pressure systems uh, along the North Pacific and the Bering Waters with a little bit of a jet streak on the backside there and a weak polar jet up there to the north at 70 knots. Looking at your 9,000 foot winds, primarily a westerly flow becoming southwesterly along the Bering and the western coast with the speed max along the western Aleutians. Now the ridge is going to be centered there across the eastern gulf, but a little bit of a stronger flow in between the low pressure and high pressure between 25 to 35 knots. Strongest winds might th be there across the central gulf waters at 40 knots, primarily a south Westerly flow even at the 3,000 foot level between 20 to 40 knots. Look for a speed max between these two systems, especially across the Alaska Peninsula on up through the western Alaska range and on north towards the Beaufort Sea Coast. That's going to be your primary concern tomorrow. And then we, we will see more of that westerly flow, a zonal flow across the bearing. Now to sum all these turbulence up, we're looking at below 4,000 feet across the 
western areas of the bearing. And here's that speed max that I was mentioning just a moment ago. And these concerns um, probably are going to stretch all the way up to that eastern, eastern Brooks Range there. So below 5,000 feet across much of the state. Now in just a moment, we'll be back with your marine forecast. It's important for us as pilots to recognize that there's a very delicate balance that exists in our, our recreation or our field of, uh, of career or whatever else it may be. Are there some professional pilots in the crowd or pretty well all general aviation? Is there a, a mix? Who flies for a living? Couple? Anybody fly helicopters? Anybody a rotary wing pilot? Joel? Oh, sit up front so I don't have to talk loud. Okay? Yeah. Now, I hate to make jokes about helicopter pilots. And they have enough trouble, don't they? All those moving parts. Holy cow. Now, when I talk about the, the, the delicate balance that exists here, what I mean is you have a specific reason to go flying. That's the, the mission, if you would. There's a certain airplane that you're going to use. That's the machinery involved that you're going to use. It must fit the job, OK? Two people in a two-seat airplane, that, that fits the job, right? Uh, this used to be a big thing with agriculture spraying, crop spraying. Uh, if they're using the right machinery, it works pretty well. Super cubs with uh, wire cutters and, and so on aren't really the best way to go. Further to that, the aircraft must be in the proper environment. And the simplest uh, example of that would be a, a VFR-equipped aircraft with respect to instruments and radios in an IFR environment. It is just not going to work. Now, further to that, the pilot. By statistics, they're going to say that's the weak part of the, uh, of the equation, if you would, because the majority of aircraft accidents are pilot error. Now, we don't use that term anymore. They got more sophisticated, and we say things like the pilot failed to or whatever else. I don't like that particularly because if you turn the, the scenario around, we'll find that 100% of the s flights that ended successfully also had a pilot on board. So the accident investor may say that the pilot is the weakness in the equation. I say it's a strength because you have the responsibility and the authority that goes with it to say, this aircraft does not fit this environment, or I don't fit the environment with that aircraft or any combination thereof. You have to do that, okay? Now, I'm not going to talk about this anymore because I think if you keep a picture of this in the back of your mind, that a lot of what I talk about a little later here will make a bit more sense. We have a poster that says that a superior pilot is one that uses superior judgment, blah, blah, blah. Again. <laughs> You get the feeling that I don't rest necessarily need to have skill as well, but you do, okay? And I'll just make that point one more time, and that's the last time that I'll mention it. I have about five slides that define pilot judgment. There's probably a, as many definitions of judgment as there are people in this room. Uh, we think of it as common sense or horse sense or whatever else. All of those things are difficult to define. But I think that this one probably fits us as pilots better than any other that I've seen, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, pilot judgment is a process that infers that there's some action taking place of recognizing all available information, emphasis on the word all, about those three things I just mentioned in the equation, the, the aircraft, ourselves, and the environment in which we're operating. And you need to know everything you possibly can about those, followed by the rational evaluation of alternatives. Now, emphasis on the plural there, alternatives. That's to implement timely decisions, which is also very important, that will maximize safety. Now, that's quite a mouthful, all right? But there's three very important things to remember there, that we have a rational evaluation of alternatives, timely decision making and maximum safety, not just come up with some sort of a decision based on a wild guess that might work sometimes. That just isn't good enough. So we're going to aim for the bullseye all the time. Pilot decision making, judgment if you would, thus involves one's attitude towards risk taking, 
Uh, yeah, attitude is a very, very important thing, and we're going to talk about attitudes as well uh, this evening as we go. And more importantly, it's that pilot's ability to make decisions, and those decisions are based upon your, your level of knowledge, of skill, and of experience, those three uh, famous things, if you would. Now, again, like judgment, these are like three separate bank accounts. You can't trade one for the other. You have to maintain a healthy balance in each one, all right? Um, most accidents, now I, here I am, it seems like I'm dwelling on the negative, but though that's the hard evidence. When an aircraft accident occurs, very seldom do we find that it was a lack of skill, okay? Most often pilots have the level of skill required. Knowledge may have been a little bit weak, or probably the combination of, uh, of machine and environment wasn't just quite right. But you do have to maintain a balance. You can't trade one for the other. The person that's extremely skillful with the aircraft that doesn't understand the airspace structure or air traffic control clearances is not a complete professional pilot. Okay? And we are all supposed to be professionals. Hello, and we are back to your marine forecast. We're going to talk about the sea ice edge to start your marine forecast. We're looking at a map that has decreased with the ice coverage since yesterday. And actually, we did expand the ice coverage with uh, little breaks in the clouds. We were able to make out that this ice cover just off of the Prudhoe Bay area was a little bit uh, larger than previously depicted. However, I expect with the next coming uh, few days, we're going to see melting continue across the bearing. So we've, <clears throat> I'm sorry, across the northern, northern slope here, we're going to see that begin to erode. And across the Chukchi Sea or north, we are going to see a continuation of eroding. We already saw a large area uh, cutting out from a day or so ago. So that, that trend is going to continue as we continue to get the warmer temperatures flowing from the south and southwesterly directions. Now let's take a look at your southeastern, uh, southeast forecast for tomorrow. We're going to see primarily a south wind. Uh, today was very calm, but that wind is going to pick up around 20 knots out of the south, except out of the northwest as you head towards the uh, southern channels there. Across the outer waters, primarily a northerly flow between 15 to 25 knots there to the south, so a small craft just to the south there, with seas on that day between four to seven feet across uh, the, the area waters. Now on your Friday, expect a change of direction, more of a northerly direction across the entire water areas. And then we'll see seas a little bit lower that day between two to seven feet with the highest seas near the small craft area in the, along the outer waters. And let's take a look towards the Gulf Coast. Uh, the go Gulf Coast are across the western areas. We're going to see primarily a southerly direction on Thursday with more of an easterly direction towards the Prince William Sound. The seas on this day will be between four to seven feet with the highest seas along the speed maxima across the Barren Islands there. And then as, as we head into your Friday forecast, a little bit wind directional change there to the north across the inlet and becoming a little bit more westerly across the northern Gulf. Now, uh, looking at seas that day will be between two to five feet across the Cook Inlet down towards Shelikoff Strait, and the Gulf waters will be between four to six feet. Across the Alaska Peninsula, we'll see southerly winds, a little bit gusty at times to 35 knots, and we'll see uh, primarily eight foot seas with a little bit higher seas there to the south of the peninsula. On Friday, a wind directional change is expected here as well. A small craft there across Bristol Bay between 20 to 25 knots across the entire area and seas will be four to nine feet, the highest seas across the Pacific side. Looking at your Aleutians for your Thursday, I'm gonna step off the screen so you can see the seas for this area and that's gonna be between 15 to 20 knots all out of the west direction for your Thursday and then we'll see seas between five to eight feet. For your Friday, a little bit of a directional change again. Uh, for the Aleutians, more of a northwesterly direction with seas on this day between four to seven feet and looking at lighter winds between 15 to 20 knots. Now across your west coast Thursday, expect 15 to 25 knots, the highest winds near uh, Nunavak Island and just south. 
and then we'll see the north to switch to a south direction there along the west along the west coast. Seas on this day will be between four to eight feet with the highest seas across the windier locations. And Friday we'll see 20 to 25 knots, except towards uh, the Purple Off Islands, a little bit lighter wind speeds will be near 10 knots and we'll see four to six foot seas on that day and a change of direction from southeast becoming north to west across the central and northern waters. Looking at your north coast, we'll see winds primarily between 10 to 20 knots and we'll see south southeast to south winds across the Chukchi Sea and just uh, along the Kotzebue Sound across the northern waters there, change of wind direction from east direction to northwest as you head towards Kaktovik. And seas on this day will be between four to six feet. On your fri Friday, look for stronger winds on this day, 25 to 30 knots, small craft advisories for most of the area with seas between four to seven feet. Let's recap your forecast. Uh, low pressure along the eastern areas of the Bering is gonna spread uh, rain a little bit further towards the east, getting into the Copper River and Anchorage Bowl on up towards Fairbanks and towards the Eastern Brooks Range. A few lingering thunderstorms tonight in your forecast. However, for the southeast, they're gonna enjoy some nice dry conditions through the end of the week. While this uh, eastern areas of the Bering is gonna be replaced with the next low pressure system coming from the western Bering and a few thunderstorms continuing across the western Aleutians tonight. Look for this reinforcing low to wind up into the backside of the system on late Thursday night and we'll see very um, gusty south to southeasterly winds become a little bit more southwesterly on the backside here and those gusts will be across the Alaska range and we'll, meanwhile there's the drier conditions across the east eastern areas of the state and then just light rain continuing across the northern tier with some patchy fog just to the north slope and then on your Friday look for an overall drying trend with that ridge starting to expand to the north and low pressure beginning to break down across the eastern bearing as the, another ridge approaches from the west. Thanks for staying with us this evening and I'll be back with you for your Thursday forecast. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.